I'm at Boeing Field. You can see the mountain is uh, semi out today, even though it's a little on the hazy side. And uh, what you're looking at is Blue Angel number seven and their support plane, their cargo plane known as Fat Albert. They are the first to arrive and we are awaiting the arrival of the rest of the Blue Angels team coming here for Seafair 2023. They should be here shortly. We are with Lieutenant Scott Goosens, also known as Blue Angel Number Four. Lieutenant, thanks for taking a minute to chat with us. Really appreciate that. Uh, how long have you been a pilot? I've been flying in the Navy for about ten years now, and this is my second season on the Blue Angels. Okay, so how do you how do you go from I'm a Navy pilot, which is amazing in and of itself, yeah. to now I'm a member of their most elite squad? 
Oh, well, it, there's an application process for sure, kind of like any, any selective organization uh, in the Navy. So put in an application, go through the whole process. It's about a six month process when it's all said and done, uh, when we uh, select the new team or when the applicants go through and then we select the new team. So um, it's nothing, nothing unbelievable. I am uh, no different than any other pilot in the Navy. Uh, the application uh, is open to all TAC Air Pilots in the Navy and Marine Corps uh, who meet the minimum requirements. So I put in an application, went through the process, interviewed, and was fortunate enough to get selected to be a blend. Well, then I guess, and probably put it in, in civilian terms, yeah. but what does it take to be the one they choose? Uh, yeah, I don't think any of us actually really know. I think uh, we're, everyone who gets selected for this team probably thinks that they were never going to get selected for this team or they had no chance. Uh, so we're all incredibly incredibly fortunate to be here and uh, just excited to be a part of the team and uh, very lucky to represent the Navy and Marine Corps and Naval Aviators uh, stationed all across the globe uh, defending our country. Okay, now you just mentioned the Marine Corps, and I just oh. looked at your hat. Are you a Marine pilot? I'm not. I'm You're Navy. Navy pilot. Yes. Okay, yes, all right. Just want to yeah. make sure I yeah. got that right. Now, this beautiful machine standing behind you here yeah. is a Boeing, of course, our local, local one of our largest employers, an FA-18 Super Hornet. You guys used to fly the F-18s, now it's the FA-18, uh, and I believe it's a couple of seasons now you've been using the Super Hornet. Yeah. Tell us about this plane. I absolutely love this plane. I, I've grown up in the Navy flying this, this jet. I never actually flew the, the Legacy Hornet, uh, which the team flew through the 2019-2020 season. Uh, so I've been fortunate throughout my whole career. I've been flying, flying the Super Hornet. Uh, and the two years that I've been on this team, I've been flying the Super Hornet. And it's an unbelievable aircraft. It's about 33% larger than the original Legacy Hornet uh, with some more powerful motors as well. And it's just a, an awesome, awesome airplane. Uh, it's uh, kept me safe uh, many, many dark, dark nights uh, in, out in the middle of the ocean on a pitching deck of an aircraft carrier. It's brought me home every single time. So I absolutely love this airplane. And um, I think if you, if you ask anyone who flies this, this aircraft throughout the fleet, they'd all tell you the same thing. Now, you, you say more powerful, and I know you didn't, didn't fly the Legacy Hornet. But based on just your, I'm sure you have at least some vague knowledge of, of the other plane. Like, when you're saying much more powerful, how much more powerful are we talking? Uh, it's, it's significantly more powerful. Uh, like I said, it's a bigger airframe that can carry a bigger payload, more fuel, all that. So you just need engines that can, uh, that can handle that, right? So uh, the engines are they're comparable to what the Legacy had in terms of that airframe. Uh, again, like I said, we just have a bigger airframe, so it requires some, uh, some slightly bigger engines to keep the performance the way we want to. Well, now I have to ask, if the combat version went up against a Russian MiG, how would it do? It's all its all about the, the person in the airplane, right? So it's all about the pilots, and I don't think it's any secret the United States is the best pilots in the world. Uh, we train incredibly hard. Uh, and we take our job uh, very seriously. So uh, we want to make sure um, whenever we are up there, we are the best in the sky so we can defend this country wherever we are. And we definitely appreciate you. Now, in terms of using this plane for the air show, yeah. tell us a little bit about what we can expect and maybe what's different based on what you learned about past years with the Blue Angels. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I tell you, if you have not seen a Super Hornet Blue Angel show, uh, you are in for a treat. You're going to absolutely love it. Uh, like I said, the plane is bigger than the uh, than the Legacy Hornet that we used to fly. So it's just a lot more jet, a lot more jet kind of in your face. It's a, it's powerful. Everything about it is great. The show itself has not uh, changed uh, incredibly much from the Legacy Hornet, but there are certain things that this plane just does better. Uh, so you'll be able to see that that performance showcase this weekend here at SeaFair. Well, for some reason, I love the fleur de lis. Do you guys still do that? We do. I love the fleur de lis. It's probably right? one of my favorite maneuvers as well. So we're, we'll definitely be doing that this uh, this weekend as long as we have the weather to do so. Well, in terms of difficulty of the maneuver, yeah. I mean, where would you gauge the fleur de lis since I brought it up? The fleur de lis is tough, especially for the diamond pilots, because uh, we'll break out of that maneuver, execute a 360-degree roll, and then we'll all join back into the diamond in the top of the loop. Uh, which is incredibly challenging and something you don't practice in uh, in the fleet. Uh, that is a maneuver that is unique to the Blue Angels. So it takes a long time. We spend three months in the desert of Southern California, flying two, three times a day, six days a week, uh, to perfect that craft just so we can put on a safe flight demonstration to the American public. So the fleur de lis is, is practiced quite often uh, while we're down there in El Centro, California. 
and uh, it is it is difficult, but one that we uh, have put a lot of time um, and effort into to make sure that we can execute it execute it well. Well, let's talk about it more generally because a lot of these formations are very close. What does it take for six airplanes to be practically wing to wing? Practice, lots and lots of practice. Uh, as I mentioned, we spend three months out of the year from January to March flying two to three times a day, six days a week, uh, just getting rep after rep after rep so we can get to a point where we not only have the skill to be able to fly close together, because we don't start close together, we'll start further apart, work our way in as we build consistency and confidence, uh, but really what it takes is trust. It's teamwork and trust is the, or I should say, are the cornerstones of this team. So you can't fly 12 inches apart from another aircraft unless you trust your life to the person who is flying next to you. Um, and a maneuver I'd say that highlights that the most would be the Diamond 360. So it's one of the first maneuvers the Diamond does across the show line. And it's no kidding, 12 to 18 inches of wind tip to canopy separation between the aircraft. Uh, and we are all locked in together and that's something that we put, again, tons of time, um, time and effort into. And uh, we trust each other you know, with our lives. It's, it's kind of like being in a band. If you've ever been in a band, um, if everybody's not playing in time, it all kind of falls apart. So, and how do you do that? You just gotta practice, you gotta get the reps. So it's, it's very similar, I would say. Well, you just dovetailed into the next question yeah. I was gonna ask you is because you have to listen. Yep. Tell me a little bit about the communication that goes on when you're out there flying in formation. Absolutely, yeah, the communication is a huge part of, of how we fly this show, right? So almost everything is done off of cadence and off of calls. So radio calls that boss makes or I will make or five will make throughout the show will cue us into initiate control movement. So we don't fly reactive, we fly proactive uh, in the point. So as soon as we hear a call, we know we're starting to move those controls even before we've seen anything uh, change in the jet that we're flying formation off of. So communication is incredibly important. Uh, and again, something that just takes practice, lots and lots of repetition. So you said this is your second season? It is. So this is not your first Seafair then? No, I was here last year, yeah. Okay, so what do you think of this event? I mean, as oh. I understand it, you know, you guys like it because somebody, in fact, one of our guys who does yeah. PA over at Seafair Weekend uh, was saying, you know, you guys like it because it's the best, like, VIP status of any show you go to. Oh, but how do you like it? I wouldn't say that. I, I, don't even, I don't even think about that. I would say that this is definitely one of my favorite air shows. Um, I would say here in San Francisco, I grew up in San Francisco, that's kind of what inspired me to join the Blue Angels was when I was a kid growing up there, watching the air show every year uh, during Fleet Week, and then getting to fly here last year, it's incredibly similar, uh, the feeling flying here and, and flying over San Francisco in terms of just being over the city, over water, boats everywhere, it's just an incredible experience and the flying is, is unparalleled. Uh, it's so beautiful. I mean, you look at this weather, like you couldn't ask for better conditions to fly an air show, uh, a more scenic backdrop. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible being here. We're so, so excited and feel so fortunate to be able to fly here this weekend. And the people who we meet are, uh, are fantastic. You know, everybody we get to interact with during our, you know, four or five days that we spend here in Seattle is so welcoming to us and, and so happy to have us have us back. You know, this is one of the few shows we do every single year, uh, and I think there's a reason for that, uh, because it is such an amazing, uh, special place. So, again, as as we are every year, we are incredibly excited to be here. Well, and we've had years, I can remember in years past, where the cloud deck got like as low as 1,500 yeah. feet, and it, it altered the conditions. So, in a way, it's almost like, you know, one area where we might be grateful for global warming, even though we don't necessarily <laughs> want it to happen. But no, it's it's great that you guys are going to be able to do that. Now, uh, did you grow up in San Francisco, in the city? I did. I grew up in the city of San Francisco. So I, uh, when I was growing up, not a huge naval presence there, but uh, there was in the past. And it's one of the locations in the Blues do a show every single year. And I remember growing up as a kid, we'd be in school, and on Thursday and Friday, just like we're about to do here in Seattle, uh, you know, tomorrow and Friday, we'd start hearing the jets and seeing the jets flying outside the classroom, and we knew the teachers had no chance, or the teachers knew they had no chance of keeping our, our attention on them, so they'd always let us go out and watch. And I used to think it was the coolest, coolest thing in the world, so um, it, it kind of lit the fire uh, in me as a kid to... to pursue this eventually and I was uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to select it to be selected to fly jets in the Navy, fly F-18s, that was my goal. And then when I had the opportunity to apply to this team, I 
do. I'd regret it if I didn't. I didn't at least uh, throw my name in the hat, and I was fortunate enough to get picked up. So it's it's surreal for sure. You know, pinch myself every day, getting to climb into these jets and and fly uh, in the very machines that inspired me to do this all in the first place. That is fabulous. Now I'm here with uh, my friend Dino from the competition. Dino, you got any questions? <laughs> I just have one. Yeah, that, that was great, by the way, Ryan. And look at Ryan when you answer. So in all my years of covering Seafair, I've seen a few uh, female uh, personnel on the staff of the support team. Yeah. Now you actually have a pilot. Yeah. Um, what is her name? Is this her first Seafair? Yes. You know? Yes. So her name and, and just tell me about her. How good is she? Obviously, she's elite. Mm. But. Tell me about it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And look at Ryan. Absolutely. So we uh, we have had female pilots on the Bolanos before, uh, female pilots for Fat Albert. This is the first year that we do have a, a female pilot in, in the F-18 flight demonstration. Uh, and that's Lieutenant Amanda Lee. Uh, and it's great. It's great to have her. Uh, I She'd be the first one to tell you uh, that she's incredibly, she's incredibly proud to be a part of this team. Um, and I'm incredibly proud. Uh, that we do have a female flying in F-18. I myself have a daughter, so I'm happy that she's able to look up and see somebody uh, who is uh, who is like her flying these airplanes. Uh, and that's incredibly important, but that's also not why Amanda's here. She's here because she's a great pilot, and she's earned the right to be here. Uh, and that's why she was selected, not because she's a female. Uh, so, incredible, incredible aviator. Excited to have her. Uh, I'm sure she's excited for her first sea fair. Um, and she's just another important short. important piece of the uh, of the 2023 team. Okay, well I'm a girl dad myself, so yeah. proud to have her too. Uh, Blue Angel number four, Lieutenant Scott Goosens. Appreciate it. Thanks, Lieutenant. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.